So, uh, hello everybody, thank you for having me. As Ariel uh, said, I'm the CEO and the co-founder of uh, Phonetica. Phonetica is a young startup, still, still in the stilt mode, and we aim to diagnose diseases by speech analytics. Right now we're doing uh, research with the ACLP, Africa Center for Language Processing, here in Tel Aviv. Not here, in Tel Aviv. And with the major hospital in Israel. And I hope that uh, in the next uh, conference, I will be able to present some of the results of this uh, research. Uh, previously, I served in, the, in ISA, in Israeli uh, security agency, for more than 20 years. And in my last position, I was the head of the technology division and was responsible for the, uh, all the technology solutions that ISA uses. And uh, today I was, I, I was asked to talk with you about privacy. And uh, the session that we had uh, before, some of the session before, uh, session that Hadass gave and Shira gave, are, are related to the, to the privacy issue. And this, this is what I'm going to be talking about for the next 20 minutes. OK. So I'll begin with the, with, with the story and your permission. Some time ago, my, my father asked me, to help him out with some of his uh, internet issues, and uh, I was happy to do that. We went to his, through his uh, emails. We went. This is not. Mm, that's that's the right one. Okay. We went to his emails. We went to his uh, bank application. We added some of his grandchildren to his Facebook account, and so on and so forth. But then. I had to explain to him what shouldn't he do while using the internet. Don't use too short passwords. Don't use the same passwords in many sites. Don't uh, open emails from a person you don't know. Don't open attachments. Don't press on link, strange links, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So after I finished that, he looked more like this. And, and I was thinking, why, why was that needed? And it was needed because my father is respons responsible for his privacy in a domain that he knows very little about. It's just like if he had to go to the hospital and once he gets there, he's responsible for his medical re records. So maybe, maybe privacy is not that important. Or maybe, uh, as, as Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google once said, and this is amazing, so I'll, I'll, I'll quote it exactly, if you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Or, or, or there's another approach, I have nothing, nothing to hide approach, right? But let's, I, I don't want to have this conversation on, only on, on the definition of privacy, but let's, let's think for, for a second or two about day-to-day -day actions that, that, that we do, and we don't want them to be public, for example. Or maybe we can think about the change in our behavior once we know that we are being monitored. Okay? I think these two examples can, uh, emphasize, can emphasize the fact that we don't want to live, I think. We don't want to live in a no privacy co community. We want to have our privacy. OK. So half of the world population have access to the internet. Many are connected all of the time via their cellular phones. And there are many other computer-like machines that we are using. For example, we have in our homes a, a Wi-Fi router. Some of us maybe use a webcams and other things that are always connected to the internet and hence poses a threat to our privacy. The, the network is an opportunity for, ver for everyone, young, Oh, I, I wanted to add something else. The, 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 the sentinel, I chose this as a sentinel. The sentinel for privacy is us, right? So it's looking for our privacy. 
the, the internet is, is an opportunity for all of us, young, old, people with spe special needs, right? We all have an opportunity. If we can get to services that, that are remotely accessed by internet, if we can get information about our, our rights, about bureaucratic processes, and more. Athletes use all kinds of uh, uh, measuring uh, devices like bracelets to measure their heart rate, maybe heart pressure, pace, and more. We know that uh, chronic disease, uh, people that with chronic diseases can communicate with physicians using the internet. For example, they can send the EKG to the internet to the physicians. But, but who's responsible for the privacy of all of, all, all of this information? Who is looking on that issue? And how protected is our medical record now? Just in 2016, we had a data breach, a medical data breach, once in every month, just in the United States. For one example, the Southeast Eye Institute reported that 87,000 of its patients had a, their medical record breached and stolen because one of the third part vendors at the data breach. And this is only one example. The IoT. The IoT is one of the recent trends in the internet, and the many, many of us use IoT devices. The example that the people used to give is the example of the refrigerator, right? The refrigerator in our house will know how to get the right list of groceries that we need without our intervenience. And maybe we are not worried about the privacy of our list, but as I said, a lot of other information is being transferred via the internet. Let's take one, one example. An Israeli a company, a big Israeli company, had a big a campaign, it was an advertising campaign about smart homes. And one of the features of smart home was uh, the ability to use webcams to monitor what's happening in your house via your smartphone. Whenever you are in the world, you could look into your house with your smartphone, find out what's happening. Some of the, the customers were privileged enough to look at the neighbor's houses. <laughs> you heard about that? So, so you, you, you look to see your house, and you see the house of your neighbor from the inside without your neighbor knowing about it. That was a malfunction. Uh, in this case, it was a malfunction. Or this, that's what they told us, that it was a malfunction. But consider the, the, the situation that your neighbor looks into your house without you knowing about it. Who's, who's responsible? Who is taking care? or of, of our privacy, right? So there's a big opportunity in IoT, but IoT devices are usually cheap and poorly designed in security aspects and poorly manufactured as, as for security. And that's one of the reasons they're such a big threat. Maybe you heard about the dying attack. A few months ago, a lot of IoT devices all over the, the world were harnessed to, a, to the attack, to a DDoS attack on Dyn. Maybe you never heard about Dyn, but Dyn is part of the infrastructure of many companies in the, in the internet. So the Dyn attack has stopped the communication of those big sites such as Twitter. Twitter was off the line for several hours because your or your or your webcam was part of a DDoS attack on Dyne. Millions of IoT devices, as I mentioned earlier, poorly, devi poorly 
designed and manufactured because we all want them to be cheap. Millions of the devices attacked the Dyn infrastructure. And Dyn, giving service to Twitter, stopped the communication to Twitter and other sites for several hours. That all happened just lately. Maybe you read the newspaper this morning, and if you don't, I'm here to tell you what was written in the front page of Yediot. Doctors in Israel have, has installed webcams in their clinics for several reasons. One, there's a lot of violence against doctors lately. And the other reasons, as they told us, is that the insurance asked them to do that. But because those devices are, as I already said, poorly designed and manufactured, those pictures were soon on the internet. So you could see your neighbors going to the doctor in an intimate situation in the internet. The, the pictures, the videos were stolen from those video cams and were put on the internet. So who's, who's responsible? It's not, I, I guess we're all angry at the doctor that installed the webcam in his clinic. I think we're right. But isn't, there, isn't he allowed to expect that if he already did that, the camera is well protected? The information will not be linked, linked to the internet. So this is one of the uh, uh, challenges of the Internet of Things. Now, if some of you are curious and want to try this at home, there's a, you all know Google, right? You use Google to search the internet. Maybe you want to use Shodan, Shodan, S-H-O-D-A-N, to search all the IoT devices that you can approach remotely all over the world. If you're interested in webcams that people put in their homes and you want to see what's new in their home, maybe they've got new furniture or something else you want to greet them for, you can use Shodan to search the internet and find all the devices that are open, that, that the access to them are open, and you can also access a con control and command system all over the world and other things that were poorly designed, manufactured, and in this case also implemented in, 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 in the field or in the place that they are, uh, were implemented. So try. Time, time sure flies. Okay. All right. More than five minutes late. So I, right? Okay. <laughs> right. Let's try this. No, not at all. Turning to the other, the other direction. Don't like me at all. Okay. So, a. Uh, so, so the question, the major question is, why are we the only one considered responsible, accountable to our privacy? Why are we the sentinels of ourselves? So we have a lot of reasons for that. I'll go to it uh, quickly. First of all, because we are used to that, right? And because the internet protocol was, was invented more than 30 years ago, and from then we had a lot of new challenges, and it's not suitable to deal with those challenges because in cyberspace the attacker has much easier life than the, 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 the attacker has to go in only once, right? He has to find only one open door to get in. When you protect, you need to protect all doors all time because you, you, you don't know from which direction the attacker will come, right? Programmers uh, write badly bad code because they don't have any incentive to write the code secure enough. You can find a lot of bad, badly written code in many systems and devices. The, the business sector has an incentive to pay money for, for uh, cyber security measures in organization, but the, this sector doesn't have the same incentive to put money into protecting us. The democratic nature of the internet, oops, the democratic nature of the internet 
makes it hard to enforce, to enforce security. And as I said, the mass production of cheap IoT and other devices make the internet, the network, vulnerable. The legal and the regulatory bodies has a hard time keeping pace with the internet and technology. All of these points out, to my opinion, to a market failure. Where there is a market failure, governments and regulatory bodies must step in, must respond. Where there is no economic incentive, it is clear that the free market will not solve the problem and governments should. It's just like uh, seat belts in cars, right? The car manufacturers had no incentive to put seat belts in our cars or, or airbags. So why did they do that? Because government and regulatory bodies made them do that. We don't have an aftermarket for seat belts, right? We don't buy a car, then go out to the street and look for a shop that sells us seat belt. But we have a large aftermarket for a security device, security measures. For example, if you buy your smartphone, right? Whatever smartphone you buy, you don't have enough security measures with it. You need to buy others like antivirus or personal firewall or whatever. So, Israel, that was the seedbed. Israel, one of the, one, one of the advanced countries in the world in this measure, we just uh, had established a national CERT uh, IL and, and, and the national authority. It is being led by, in the Prime Minister, by the National Cyber Bureau and also the police, the Israeli police, also established a special unit for cyber, for cy cyber crimes. It addresses part of the problem, but not all of, the, all of it. And as I said, Israel is, is an advanced country and many countries are far behind. Let me now uh, just quote Bruce Schneier, this is a picture. Bruce Schneier, one of the, uh, I think, biggest uh, security gurus in the internet. Uh, he once said, we must stop trying to fix the user to achieve security. We'll never get there. And research toward those goals just obscure the real problem. Usable security does not mean getting people to do what we want. It means creating security that works given or despite what people do. It means security solution that deliver on user security goals. This is Bruce Schneier. And to conclude, the essence of, of the matter, the more connected computers and devices take up the larger part of our lives, the more responsibility for our privacy has to transfer from the end users, us, to the regulator. It is best created to regulation now, now, as a planned move, and not as a response to a major event. The bl blame the victim thinking is older than the internet, of course, but it doesn't make it right. We owe it to our users to make information age a safe place for everyone, not just for those with security awareness. Thank you. Thank you all.